Oil rigs, they're designed to capture and store huge quantities of oil from under the sea. They're located in some of the most inhospitable places on the planet and have to be built to withstand the elements. Oil rigs are therefore some of the largest and most resistant structures ever made. Join me for today's video. We're going to count down the 15 tallest oil rigs in the world. Number 15. Bald Pate All right, kicking off the list is the absolutely enormous Bald Pate offshore compliant tower oil platform. Setting up shop near the coast of Louisiana, the Bald Pate stands at 1,902 feet tall, and it's owned and operated by the Hess Corporation. This giant structure has a bit of a history behind it, as it's the first freestanding compliant tower to be built following the Lena platform, which was a guide compliant tower. But beyond that, this offshore rig is the second tallest structure built in the waters after the Petronius platform. It was specially designed and built by J. Ray McDermott Engineering in Texas to be more flexible than traditional fixed truss towers like the Bullwinkle oil platform. And this particular design allows for it to move up to 10 feet laterally during severe storm conditions. The compliant tower section jacket was fabricated by Acker Gulf Marine and weighs a total of 28,900 tons, which is far below the builder's original estimate of 50,000 tons. Something this big needed to be built in multiple sections, all of which were fabricated apart and assembled together when all parts reached their final destination. The lower 350 feet of the base account for nearly a third of the structure's weight, as it has a wider base of 140 square feet, which reduces about 90 square feet as you make your way to the top. Then there are the legs themselves, which each have a 12-foot diameter at their widest and a steel thickness of 3.5 inches. It's a pretty stellar rig, and the combined height of the jacket and truss tower section of the bald pate measure up to 1,671 feet, most of which is completely submerged underwater. Number 14. Bullwinkle Now, Bullwinkle may be the name of a certain moose from our childhood, but it's also the name of one of the largest oil platforms in the world. Bullwinkle is a fixed steel oil platform installed in the Gulf of Mexico in 1988. And when you see something this big, you can't help but scratch your head and ask how it got there, especially since it's in the middle of the ocean. Well, at the end of the 1980s, Bullwinkle was the third tallest freestanding structure in the world, standing 1,736 feet tall, with 1,352 feet below the waterline. The oil platform's jacket is what sits mostly submerged, and before it made its way into the Gulf, it took three years to build in Texas by Gulf Marine fabricators and cost about $500 million. But the hard part really began after the completion of the jacket, when contractors took on the job of transporting the 49,000-ton, 1,400-foot-tall structure from the construction yard over land, and then over water using a barge. The entire process took five days. Bullwinkle is the second tallest object to ever be moved from one location to another, and after all that work, it'll be decommissioned by the end of its economic life, meaning it will likely have to be moved again. When it was built, the Bullwinkle platform became the third tallest freestanding structure built in water after the Petronius and Baltpate compliant towers, but it was the tallest fixed steel structure that could be built on land, as it's without any modifications. The company installed a 7.5 mile oil pipeline connecting the Bullwinkle platform to the Boxer platform in Green Canyon 19, where initial production from the Bullwinkle field was processed. After the facilities were set, the platform produced oil into a 12-inch line that connected to the Boxer system and the gas flowed into a separate 12-inch line that tied into what is now the Manta Ray system. The initial capacity of the platform was 59,000 barrels of oil per day and 100 million cubic feet of gas per day. Number 13. Gulfax Sea Platform In honor of being the heaviest man-made object to ever be moved goes to the Gulfax Sea Platform in the Norwegian North Sea. But what is it exactly? Well, Gulfax is an oil and gas field in the North Sea that consists of three production platforms, Gulfax A, B, and C. The oil produced is transferred onto loading buoys in the field, while the gas is transported by pipeline for processing at the gas facility at Karsta, near Stavanger. From there, the gas is routed for export. Gulfax A is also used for storage and shipment of stable crude oil from the Vigius, Visond, and Snor fields. Oil and gas from Gulfax B are transferred to A and C for processing, storage, and export. C has received processed oil from the Tordis field since June of 1994. This field set a production record on October 7, 1994, with 605,965 barrels of oil. 
The satellite fields Gulfax South, Rimfox, Sinkfox, and Gulveg are all developed utilizing subsea wells that are remote operated from the Gulfax A and C platforms. The tortoise oil field is also tied into Gulfax C2. If it isn't clear already, Gulfax C is the star of the show. The platform sits more than 700 feet below the ocean's surface and makes up for nearly half of the entire structure's height. Just to put that into perspective a bit, it's 200 feet taller than the Eiffel Tower. Gulfax C has a total weight displacement of nearly one and a half million tons. The structure began its journey in Vats, a small town in Norway, and made its way by boat to Stuard, but not before the concrete legs were lowered down under that cold water. When the Gulfax Sea Station arrived, barges were used to slide it onto the concrete, with quite literally zero margin for error. But now, it still needs to be moved out to sea. So, from Stuart, it took 136,000 horsepower to get the ball rolling, and have her move safely out to sea where she's been sitting since 1989. Number 12. The Lena Platform the Lena platform is still one of the largest offshore rigs in the world, except instead of standing tall above the waves, this one is laying at the bottom of the ocean. But don't worry because this story isn't a tragedy. Formerly owned by ExxonMobil, the Lena compliant tower platform originally made its place in the world just 50 miles southeast of Grand Isle, Louisiana. Originally installed back in 1983 in a thousand feet of water, the Lena platform is the world's first cable stabilized production platform in the area. The structure originally stood at 1,078 feet tall and weighed 27,000 tons, and with the decks and drilling rig added on, the Lena platform measured 1,300 feet tall, which is a good 50 feet taller than the Empire State Building in New York. This offshore rig certainly had a good run, with a 25-year lifespan and generated all sorts of ridiculous revenue from oil and natural gas sales until the end of its days in 2016, and decommissioning began the next year. But just because the Lena platform was done drilling didn't mean that it couldn't serve another purpose. ExxonMobil hooked up with the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement to turn the compliant tower platform into an artificial reef as part of the Rigs to Reef program. And on July 3, 2020, the platform's jacket was toppled in place to create a new reef site in the Gulf of Mexico outer continental shelf. Now the Lena platform is the tallest oil and gas platform in the Gulf of Mexico to become a deep water reef, according to the Bureau. During her new life underwater, marine organisms can attach themselves to the underwater portions of these platforms, which provide shelter for marine life, thus creating new artificial reefs. All coastal states in the U.S. have some type of artificial reef program, although only the five Gulf Coast states have oil and gas platform structures as their main reef sources associated with the Rigs to Reef program. I guess it is an interesting way to undo some of the damage done by building these deep water rigs. Number 11. Coelacanth Platform Named after a rare order of fish once thought to be extinct, the Coelacanth platform sits in the Gulf of Mexico and is one of the younger offshore oil rigs out in the world. This is the third tallest structure of its kind in the Gulf, standing at 1,312 feet, making it as tall as some of the world's most famous skyscrapers. This platform sits in about 1,186 feet of water with a jacket structure of just over 1,200 feet and weighs about 30,000 tons or 60 million pounds. At the base, the structure's main legs form the corners of 330 by 330 square feet, which is enough to take over two American football fields side by side. That is huge. Coelacanth's jacket tapers down at a 45 by 100 foot rectangle just above the surface, where the three level deck mounts on the main corner legs and the two center false legs post for support. But each level of these three decks is a whopping 105 by 224 feet, making for a total of about 65,000 square feet for drilling and production operations. This big yellow platform is held in place by 14 piles driven through the guides at the base of each main leg, with three piles on each two legs and another four piles on each of the others, allowing the platform to withstand hurricane force winds as well as the meanest waves and currents the ocean can throw at it. Each of these piles is about 108 inches in diameter, and it's driven deep by subsea hydraulic hammers 450 feet below the tough sea floor, securing the entire structure into the seabed. The jacket loading operation took less than three days and required that the jacket be pulled over a quarter mile until it reached its final position on the Hirima launch barge, one of the largest in the world at 853 feet long. The Coelacanth platform is capable of producing 30,000 barrels of oil per day and 60 million cubic feet of gas per day. Number 10. Tombua Landana Chilling and drilling off the coast of Angola is Chevron's Tombua Landana platform. 
Standing 1,554 feet high and weighing 76,000 tons, the Tomboa Landana platform included an integrated deck with the production facility and is supported by 56,000 ton four-leg casing pulling tool, or CPT. The CPT is one of the largest man-made structures in the world and is fixed onto the seafloor by 12 foundation piles. The platform can accommodate 120 people at a time and has 38 well slots and a capacity of 13,000 barrels per day of oil and another 210 million cubic feet of liquefied natural gas. So needless to say, this rig gets it done. The subsea system for the Tumboa Landana fields comprises two subsea manifolds. Now, one manifold is a subsea collection center for production and the second is for water injection. Two export 14-inch diameter pipelines were installed to export gas and oil from the fields and each runs for about 20 miles and are connected to the BBLT gas export pipeline through a subsea pickable Y in 570 feet of water. The Tomboa Landana project began back in 2007, making it a younger addition to this list, and a total of 46 wells were drilled and tied back to the CPT. The 35,000-ton operating weight of the platform is composed of a large integrated deck with production facilities and a 120-person accommodation, supported by a 56,000-ton compliant tower. The tower, a four-legged configuration, is secured to the seafloor by 12 foundation piles. The platform will provide a drilling deck for access to 38 well slots and be capable of simultaneous production and drilling operations with a TAD rig. The entire endeavor marks the first time a use of tender-assisted drilling rig for a fixed structure in deep water, and it includes sulfate removal membranes for seawater treatment. The company plans to treat Tomboa Landana's produced water and re-inject it into the reservoirs. This is one of the first new generation facilities offshore Angola to apply this technology to improve recovery and reduce discharge to the ocean. Could the Tomboa Landana rig be the dawn of a new day in the world of oil? Only time will tell. Number 9. The Pampano Platform Special offshore oil fields call for a special kind of offshore rig, and that's where Stone Energy's Pampano Platform comes in. Standing at 1,565 feet tall, it's an absolute force to be reckoned with in the Gulf of Mexico. This platform was one of the first deep water projects in the area and it remains a major production hub for the neighboring fields, including the ExxonMobil operated MICA field, which is tied into the Pompano platform via two 8 inch flow lines. The field on which it sits was first discovered in 1981 by Arco and Kerr McGee, only to be reevaluated and deemed economical just four years later. Development was divided into two phases. Phase 1 consisted of installing a deep water platform, top sides, and export pipelines in 1994. The second phase consisted of installing a 10-well subsea oil production template in 1995 and tying it back to the host platform. Now Pampano sits inside six lease blocks about 120 miles southeast of New Orleans in water depths ranging from 1,100 to 2,200 feet deep. British Petroleum would go on to install a 40-slot fixed platform the same year operation began, and Pampano's 10-well driverless subsea oil production template system was installed just a year later in Mississippi Canyon. In total, the Praline well was drilled to a total depth of 13,400 feet and discovered over 125 feet of net hydrocarbons. Number 8. Benguela Belize Lobito Tomboco Platform Simply known as the BBLT, this platform sits in a block off Angola in the lower Congo Basin in 1,280 feet of water covering 1,560 square miles. The entire development cost over $2 billion, with the CPT measuring 1,618 feet from the sea floor to the top of the derrick, making it the fifth tallest freestanding structure in the world. And for a little bit of perspective, the BBLT platform is nearly 700 feet taller than France's Eiffel Tower. Fabrication of the tower portion of the production facility was split into two sections. The tower base section and template, weighing over 26,000 tons, was built by Kiwit Offshore. Technip's Gulf Marine Fabricators tackled the tall tower 8,000-ton top section. The CPT's bottom section consisted of 12 foundation piles weighing 11,000 tons, fabricated in Ingleside, Texas. But this was one pricey endeavor. The drilling rig alone cost about $120 million, and the CPT's integrated platform can drill down 30,000 feet using AC variable frequency drive. It's fitted with a mechanical pipe handling system installed on its hook-load derrick, which is equipped with 4,600 horsepower. The rig also has three 2200 horsepower mud pumps rated to 7500 psi with a total mud volume of nearly 200,000 gallons. The CPT's topside modules were lifted by Harima's semi-submersible crane over a five-week period, and then the 10,000-ton north module was installed. 
It represented Harima's largest installation using the anchorless dynamic positioning system. And seeing as how this is one big rig, the vessel's dual crane capacity provides tandem lifts of up to 14,200 tons. The platform is connected to the Lianzi oil field, which holds 70 million barrels worth of oil in reserve. This field uses a subsea production system composed of three subsea production wells, three water injection wells, and an additional subsea production well and subsea water injection well each. The installation of the 26-mile-long electrically heated flow line to transport the oil from the field to host the platform was carried out by Subsea 7's rigid relay vessel 7 Ocean and was built to last a quarter of a century. Number 7. Hibernia Located in the North Atlantic, a good 196 miles east of Newfoundland in Canada, the Hibernia is a beefy 450,000-ton gravity-based structure that first brought up oil to the surface in November of 1997. Hibernia has a 345-foot caisson-built front with high-strength concrete, reinforced steel rods, and pre-stressed tendons. This offshore rig can take just about anything Mother Nature can throw at it. Its location means it's subjected to an onslaught of extreme and obscene Arctic conditions, which is why the caisson is surrounded by a wall made from 16 concrete teeth. The structure was designed to withstand a collision with a 1 million ton iceberg, which, believe it or not, is calculated to happen once every 500 years, and it can even withstand a direct hit from a mythical 6 million ton, a 10,000 year iceberg. And while it may not be the tallest oil platform in the world, it's the largest by weight. It's so big, in fact, that an entire community was built to house the 3,500 workers required for construction, and even came with its own cafeteria, gym, and entertainment facilities. While certain sections of the structure were built overseas, the majority of Hibernia was built on site. Within the gravity structure is the storage tanks for crude oil, with a capacity of 1.3 million barrels of oil equivalent. Two drill shafts, each with 32 drill slots, go down for over two miles below sea level to reach Hibernia Reservoir, and further drilling activity has taken place in the Avalon field, at a depth of about a mile and a half. Hibernia has produced over a billion barrels of oil so far, with operations expected to continue for another 15 to 20 years. The topside facilities of the Hibernia consist of five super modules, including a processing wellhead, mud, utilities, and accommodation for 185 people, plus seven topside mounted structures, including a helideck, flare boom, pipe rack, main and auxiliary lifeboat stations, and two drilling modules. Number six, stones. With such an ominous name, you can expect an enormous oil rig. Stones is a humble project from Shell that uses floating production storage and offloading facilities operating in the Gulf of Mexico, about 200 miles off the coast of New Orleans. It's the deepest operating project, reaching a depth of 9,500 feet below sea level. The Floating Production Storage and Offloading, or FPOS, named Turatea, is converted Suez Max tanker, secured in place using buoyant turret mooring technology, connected to a subsea infrastructure, pumping oil and gas from eight production wells. The disconnectable buoy-equipped turret allows the vessel to turn with the wind or in a heavy storm or hurricane, disconnect completely from the well so the vessel can sail to safer waters, despite being one of the world's deepest offshore structures. Steel wave risers link the subsea system to the buoyant turret mooring, which is a flexible pipeline with additional buoyancy, creating an arched bend between the seafloor and the surface to absorb motion of the FPSO and boost production performance at extreme depths. Stones is the first project in the world to use a disconnectable buoy configured with these steel lazy wave risers, demonstrating the unique requirement of the ultra-deep area. The FPSO used for the Stones field is a converted Suez Max tanker, secured using buoyant turret mooring technology. That disconnectable buoy-equipped turret enables the vessel to vein on location or disconnect from the well in the event of adverse weather. The design concept was chosen specifically to safely produce oil from the Stones' ultra-deep water prospect. This solution also addresses the issues related back to the lack of infrastructure, the complexity of the seabed, and unique reservoir characteristics. The oil is transported to U.S. refineries using tankers, while gas is shipped through a pipeline. But the impressive stats don't stop there, because at peak production, Stones will produce an estimated 50,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day, and it's estimated to hold more than 2 billion barrels. While the Stone fields were discovered in 2005, it wasn't until 2013 that Shell invested in the development project. That first phase of development included the two subsea wells tied back to a floating production storage and offloading vessel, and six more development wells will subsequently come on stream, raising the field's production capacity. Number 5. Berkut 
Weighing over 200,000 tons with a stronghold 115 feet deep into the seabed, the Barracoot oil platform is the largest in the world. It's located on the Sakhalin 1 oil field off the Russian Pacific coast. Barracoot is subjected to subarctic conditions, and so it's specially constructed to withstand the most extreme weather. It can withstand seismic shocks, waves of up to 52 feet tall, and sea ice as thick as 6.5 feet. It has its own autonomous power supply and can keep working at temperatures as low as negative 44 degrees Celsius. Berkut is built on a gravity-based structure fixed to the seabed at a depth of 115 feet, and construction of it alone required 170,000 cubic feet of concrete and 27,000 tons of steel reinforcing bar. The top side alone is 345 feet high, about 200 feet wide, and 470 feet high, which is about as tall as a 50-story building. Transporting and installing it on the GBS in 2014 was a feat in its own right, and doing so required both groundbreaking and record-breaking methods. The Barracoot is able to extract 4.5 million short tons of oil per year from an oil field with an expected capacity of 64 million tons, costing $12 billion. This platform was financed by the Sakhalin 1 Consortium, made up of oil companies from the US, Russia, Japan, and India. Number 4. Olympus, Mars B. The next entry on our list is absolutely ridiculous. It's named after the Greek mountain of myth. The Olympus is a mammoth platform that operates within the Mars B field, the first deep water project in the Gulf of Mexico to expand an existing oil and gas field with new infrastructure. The original Mars field was discovered in 1989 and began producing in 1996, but as the size of the field was realized to be larger, further infrastructure was built to get more oil from a wider area. The Mars B development area is located approximately 137 miles to the south of New Orleans, and its reservoirs are located at a depth of 10,000 to 22,000 feet below the sea floor. The development of Mars B extended the life of the Mars field to at least 2050, and this platform is certainly putting in the work because to date, over 700 million barrels have been produced from the field. Olympus took over the production of Mars B in 2014, operating at a water depth of around 3,100 feet and producing about 100,000 barrels per day. The platform weighs over 120,000 tons, making it heavier than 300 Boeing 747s. It's 406 feet tall from the base of the hull to the top of the derrick, with a combined deck area of 340,000 square feet. This thing is larger than the Superdome. On top of the installation of the Olympus platform, the new project involved the development of subsea wells in the development area, as well as two satellite fields. New export pipelines were laid tying back to the new West Delta 143C shallow water drilling platform near the Louisiana coast, from where the production is linked to the existing export pipeline infrastructure. The top sections of the wells were drilled by Noble Bully No. 1 drilling rig, which is currently working on the well of two satellite fields. Number 3. Troll A The Troll A platform is a con-deep gravity-based structure offshore natural gas platform in the Troll gas fields of Norway. The structure was built in 1996 out of reinforced concrete, and despite its purpose, it has a more interesting claim to fame. As of 2014, it's the tallest man-made structure to ever be transported to another location. And make no mistake, getting this thing from point A to point B was no easy feat. The Troll A platform stands over 1,500 feet tall and weighs well over a million tons, with its four concrete legs extending close to 1,000 feet below sea level. So when you see something that big, there's no possible way to do this discreetly. Much like the structure itself, the transport operation was such a big event that it was televised, and millions of people watched as engineers and contractors dropped these hollow concrete legs in the ocean and then filled them with water to let them sink to the floor and settle with their 130-foot-tall vacuum anchors. This gives a whole new definition to the term sea legs. But once the dust had settled, engineers were able to float a massive platform over onto the legs and attach everything together. It was a pretty amazing process, especially since the platform itself is so big it takes close to 10 minutes to walk from one end to the other. Number 2. Perdido The penultimate entry on our list is the deepest oil platform in the world. The Perdido is moored in a whopping 8,000 feet of water and produces oil and gas from depths of between 7,500 and 9,500 feet. There's a lot going on here. Located in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico, the Perdido acts as a hub for three fields, Great White, Tobago, and Silver Tip. 22 oil wells are connected to a 27-mile network of pipelines on the ocean floor between them. All in, it's got the capacity to handle 100,000 barrels of oil and 200 million cubic feet of gas every day. 
The Perdita was constructed in Pori, Finland by the project management company Technip, only to be transported across 8,200 miles for five months before making it to Texas in 2008. Computer-guided lasers marked out the measurements to ensure precision during construction, with a major challenge being to ensure the build was optimized for the temperature change from Finland to the Gulf. The cylindrical spar measures 555 feet and is moored securely to the sea floor. The hull is nearly 875 feet tall and weighs 22,000 tons. Above the spar are three topside containing processing units, a drilling rig and living quarters. Together, they weigh 9,500 tons and are manned by 172 people. Number 1. Petronius The Petronius platform-compliant pile tower design has been called the tallest freestanding structure in the world, surpassed only by the Burj Khalifa skyscraper. It stands at 2,001 feet above the seabed, though only 246 feet of it is actually above the water. Think of this rig like an iceberg, but sheer size aside, the Petronius is an incredibly interesting offshore platform. The tower is exceptionally flexible and can sway with the forces of the ocean rather than withstand them, because sometimes you have to be like water. Petronius has a mooring system based on 12 piles, three at each corner leg, which extends 450 feet through the mudline into the seabed. It's got a multi-deck topside measuring 210 feet by 140 feet across and 60 feet high. It includes a 4,000-ton north module and a slightly lighter south module, and the entire structure weighs an enormous 43,000 tons. Petronius's topside support a full drilling rig spread of 17 wells, including 10 producing wells and 7 water injection wells, and the tower can accommodate 21 well slots and has a capacity to handle 60,000 barrels a day. Rome wasn't built in a day, and Petronius took quite a bit of time and a whole lot of money to build. In 1997, the subsea templates were put into place and the mooring foundation piles were driven into the seabed. The 12-pile mooring system provided the foundation capacity, and they were designed to allow the tower to stay within an envelope of the famous 25-foot sway and 10-foot rotation sway at the surface. The massive north module was installed just a year later in 1998. Much to the dismay of construction teams, however, during the subsequent offshore lift to install the 3,600-ton south module, one of the two 18,000-foot working lift cables broke and unsheathed on the heavy lift vessel, which left a $70 million piece of equipment fall into the depths of the ocean while damaging the installation barge itself. Luckily, though, due to the event occurring a good 1,400 feet away from the tower itself, the accident didn't affect the integrity of the jacket, just the already giant budget. After the incident, Texaco assembled a project team tasked with reducing the construction time from the original 27-month period, and by May of 2000, Texaco had installed the second deck module. At Petronius, oil is exported by a 14-inch, 20-mile-long pipeline, while gas makes its way through a 12-inch, 12-mile gas pipeline. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.